Thank you all again for joining. Um, today we have Matt Douglas. Uh, he's going to go over um, a brief description of our SD WAN practice and then into our new Checkpoint Cloud Guard Connect offering. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand things over to Matt Douglas, our Senior Director of, An of Engineering. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, you can type those throughout, um, either within the chat or the Q&A, and I will read those to Matt as they come in. Matt, you can take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, yes, my name is Matt Douglas, uh, Senior Director of our Solutions Engineering Group here. Um, my sales engineering team would be out in the field working with you guys as partners and your customers to help design solutions. I've probably met most of you on the call here, so thanks for joining us. I want to share with you today a little bit about um, some of the thoughts we've got around some of the paradigm shifts in the SD-WAN world, uh, particularly around some of the value proposition of our VeloCloud offering, as well as then how we've layered in security, both working with existing uh, customers, existing security platforms, as well as layered in a new product from Checkpoint, their Cloud Guard Connect. So again, thanks for the time here today. If you've got any questions, go ahead and put those up on WebEx. Gabby can uh, kind of collect those. I'll try and stop if I re can remember in the middle. If not, Gabby, please interrupt me anywhere I'm going through here. So. Um, as you guys probably, you know, most of you remember, but I want to kind of go through it again. Um, you know, we are part of CBB on the New York Stock Exchange, um, and that started with Cincinnati Bell 140 years ago. So we've got a rich history, right, of being able to deliver mission critical services um, in our, in our particularly, you know, uh, with our history of delivery 911, these kinds of services in our area. Now, you're talking to CBTS here. And CBTS started about 30 years ago, uh, first as a regional VAR in the Midwest. And over that time now has grown to be about a billion dollar a year IT services company. Uh, with about 50% of our services are all managed services of some kind. A uh, big push for us in the last decade is how do we move from being kind of your typical VAR, just selling equipment into delivering more value into customers and more managed services. I'm sure probably most of you as well have seen uh, what we kind of call our four pillars, but again, I wanted to bring it up to make sure if there were any new new participants on uh, the call today or folks maybe just a refresher. These are, are most of the services that we can now deliver in the indirect channel here through, you know, with you as partners. It's kind of starts out, if you would, as our Cisco as a service model. That's kind of what we call these first two pillars here uh, on the left side. And it's all around basically our ability now to deliver Cisco solutions, deliver those now as monthly recurring revenue and pay in commissions to you now as a partner. Because in the past, typically customers, when they wanted Cisco solutions, were buying that equipment as CapEx and, and you as a partner were not in the revenue stream. And so we've spent a lot of time over the last, you know, almost two decades really putting together a group of Cisco services that we can deliver as OPEX, as managed services. It starts with our UCAS offerings, both our call manager and Broadsoft offerings. Uh, for some of you who don't know, we've been delivering Cisco call manager now for almost 18 years. And so we've got customers like the state of Ohio, we deliver 50,000 hosted Cisco phones a month for uh, GE, 40,000 hosted Cisco phones a month. State of Indiana, we do 10,000. We've got a couple of hospitals in the 10 and 20,000 range. So this is a very mature practice for us of delivering mission critical UCAS services, Cisco hosted UCAS services. We've also had a, 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 a long time Broadsoft practice, been doing that for almost 15 years. Uh, so when Cisco bought Broadsoft for us, this was a big boon because we, you know, we're one of the few service providers out there that anything to do with Cisco calling, Cisco telephony, whether it's call manager, Broadsoft, their new WebEx calling platform, any of these, we can deliver that as a service into the customer base. We talk about how there's probably some 50 million Cisco phones out there in the country registered to customer premise phone systems. 10 years from now, they'll all be UCAS. You know, some will be Ring Central, some will be eight by eight. We're there to help you and your customers when they want to stay with Cisco calling technology. We can deliver that again as an OPEX monthly recurring revenue, getting you in that managed services uh, stream. 
We also deliver the entire line of Cisco contact center services, um, whether that's UCCX or E, as well as their entire WebEx contact center line. And then anything to do with the traditional WebEx meetings, teams, rooms, boards, those kinds of things. So really anything, if a customer of yours wants to look at or continue to stay with Cisco telephony, collaboration, telepresence, these kinds of things, we can deliver this and deliver it even down to one, one user. The Broadsoft platform, we can come down to one user if we needed to. It's, you know, so, all right, so Cisco UCAS and, and Contact Center and WebEx, that's a, that's a big focus for us. The Meraki stack has also been very successful for us. Uh, we brought this to market about three and a half years ago. Um, and this idea, for, you, for those of you who haven't seen the Meraki stack, Meraki kind of revolutionized the idea of cloud orchestration for the entire LAN infrastructure stack. So whether it's a firewall, whether it's a PoE switch, a layer two or layer three, uh, whether it's an access point, indoor and outdoor, cameras, indoor and outdoor, Meraki's got this kind of revolutionary cloud orchestration layer where you can log, log into a website and see every single device, no matter where it is. If you, you could have a switch in Australia and log into that switch in Australia, see who was on it, do a Wireshark capture. And so the technology is, is really revolutionary. The challenge for people a lot is the same kind of thing in UCAS. The reason that people are moving to hosted UCAS services is because they're not so interested in managing customer premise phone systems anymore. And so we've kind of done the same thing now with network as a service. We're basically taking the entire Meraki stack and any part of your LAN infrastructure, we can now deliver that to you as a service. And so we uh, overlay complete project management uh, of, the, of the installation and design, uh, complete on-site support, day two support and repair for any of those components. And we can be very flexible as well as in contractually being able to right size and give people the ability to add locations, coterminous, upgrade in the middle of kind of particular situations. Maybe you've got a site that you had, you know, 100 users today, but you're fortunate enough to grow or you buy a company and move them in and now you got 200 and you need to add some things. We don't make you take another contract out for another three or five years. We can make it so you can add and grow with us in this product. And this product in particular, we've had a lot of success in the retail environment. Uh, we kind of have a concept that we talk to our customers of, of the store of the future. We're seeing more and more customers out there in the retail space who in the past thought of their kind of technology stack as nothing but a boat anchor, just nothing but expense, and they were going to spend as little money as possible. Well, now the whole world of, you know, kind of the digitization of our world of uh, IoT devices, digital training, guest Wi-Fi, these kinds of things, the, the retail platform now, the store of the future is becoming an enabling platform. And we've had a lot of success delivering that. So uh, situations like we've done uh, 150 uh, Donatos, uh, 600 Barnes and Nobles, in the middle of a 3000 uh, retail chain uh, uh, installation right now, about 1500 sites into that. So if you've got any customers out there that want to kind of take a look at what the, uh, the store of the future or help them build a cookie cutter, you know, branch of the future. This is a, it's a heck of a product for us. Now we're going to talk about SD-WAN today and about security. Um, and in particular, both of those are kind of multi-platform practices for us. Um, when we got into SD-WAN again, about four years ago, as you, I think you can kind of see a thread here is that we believe there's a big value in, in delivering a group of managed services that fit into the customer base of kind of 100 to 10,000 employees, let's say. And when we knew we wanted to get an SD-WAN, we wanted to take a look at what those technologies were because there's a lot of different kind of platforms. And so we uh, put together a big RFP. We first started building a lab internally uh, using some technology. We built some Linux boxes and Raspberry Pis where we could um, inject error, uh, latency, jitter, these kinds of things, and build a test plan where we could inject that error, jitter, latency into, into application flows, whether that was site to site or site to data center or even site to SaaS applications. We're going to talk about how we can even, the paradigm shift now is we can actually help improve things like Office 365, uh, as well as getting to AWS, Azure, or cloud security. So we built this test lab, built a test plan, put an RFP out, and pulled in all the kind of big names you'd expect, the Tulare, Silverpeak, Versa, Meraki, VeloCloud, Viptela. 
Noah Cloud was by and far the big winner from a technology standpoint. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of their technologies today with their forward error correction and a protocol called their dynamic multi-path optimization, as well as a concept of their cloud gateways. And these really stood out. One of the things we found out is we actually can reliably deliver voice across the internet, you know, with QoS, actually fix packet loss. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. So VeloCloud stood out, and, and this has been a key part. We're, we're actually VeloCloud's reigning partner of the year right now. We've got uh, about 500 customers, over 4,000 installations, growing strong up into the right. And so it's one of the things we want to talk about, kind of some of this paradigm shift. Rocky was, was brought into the portfolio as well because of its strength on the retail side. Uh, and this, even though you could kind of in some regards consider Rocky as SD-WAN, it's kind of SD-WAN light, it's, it's session-based, not quite the same set of controls. Oftentimes it's just, it's quite good enough for that retail organization. We've had a lot of success for retail there. And Viptela as well, although we're not gonna talk about it today, I would enjoy maybe exploring Viptela with some of you, some of you folks out there. Um, we've launched a Viptela product now that is able to deliver globally. In fact, we can deliver VeloCloud globally as well. But the Velo, Viptela product, we can deliver globally for those people who are kind of just wed to Cisco. They don't want to look at anything else. They want to look at Viptela. Viptela's made quite a few strides, and we're now able to deliver it as a fully managed service on a global basis. And part of the value add that we've added to that offer is a, is a low latency backhaul network across the globe as well. Think kind of um, REIca or Cato. One of the you know value propositions that you might take a customer to REIca or Cato is that they've got these low latency networks from let's say U.S. to to Europe or U.S. to Asia. We've uh, with a partnership with Cisco and another company built the same kind of a low latency backhaul network. So if you're if you've got some customers that you're looking on a global scale at REIca or Cato, we'd like to explore the Viptel offering with you. And then our cloud platform, uh, cloud security platform, similar kind of thing, decided where we wanted to go. We've had a lot of success in the last couple of years uh, installing some other platforms with, along with our Viptel, like Zscaler or Palo or Prisma. But Checkpoint's uh, new Cloud Guard Connect, we're going to talk about today, um, piqued our interest quite a bit. Uh, we started to work with Checkpoint um, early last year. And we're now announced a product. We're the first service provider in North America to, to incorporate their Checkpoint Cloud Guard product into any of our SD-WAN offerings. And in fact, it can even be sold standalone. And what's interesting about this Checkpoint offering you're gonna see is it's got the full UTM stack and then all of kind of the next generation SSL decryption, sandboxing, things like that. And we're gonna go into that a little bit more. And then for those of you or, or those folks who wanna look you know, at Cisco's cloud products, the Cisco umbrella, we can deliver those as well. So the idea here was just to show you a little bit again, ground you of kind of what of our strengths here are in the channel, what are some of the things we can pull together, but let's get a little deeper into some of the, uh, on the Velo Cloud side. Before we start there, one of the things I wanna show you, and we'll do this with customers a little bit, is talk to them about, you know, ground them in what's happening for them in the journey of the cloud. You know, we kind of all grew up having all of our applications, if you would, sit back at headquarters, right? You know, our email platform sat at headquarters and our ERP and our customer relationship phone systems. All this thing sat back at headquarters or a data center and we built networks that were kind of designed to backhaul, <clears throat> excuse me, backhaul all that traffic back to our data centers or headquarters. But that world's shifting and it's shifting real quick, like, you know, when you talk to your customers, I would, I would anticipate the vast majority of them moved Office 365 or Gmail. They've gotten that email platform out of their network. You know, it's the same thing of moving things now to virtual data centers or ERPs and those kinds of things. And, you know, who of us out there hasn't, isn't moving some kind of a cloud-based, you know, CRM, whether it's, you know, uh, Sugar, whether it's Salesforce, it, we're moving all those things, right? And the phone system. We're now taking and moving that phone system completely out of our network. And even then starting to take those line of business applications that we had maybe built on our own proprietary, you know, technology servers and our own data centers and moving those things to Azure, AWS, et cetera. But the problem now is we've got these old networks that have typically had us route all the way back to the data center, right? And, and those aren't as applicable now of, when we're sitting in a branch, how do we most efficiently get to cloud applications? 
one thing you'll see VeloCloud and VMware talk about now is, is the new world of a multi-cloud environment, kind of a network of clouds even. And I think that's where we're all headed, right? Is that these applications, the cloud might be our own private cloud, a hybrid cloud of a hybrid data center or just pure SaaS applications, but we're all kind of we're moving in this world of cloud applications. And so the idea is that SD-WAN as an overlay now, it could, it could go with existing MPLS networks if you want, you know, and maybe you've got, maybe you've got 50, we run into situations where maybe there's 50 locations and they decide that 10 of them need to stay on MPLS, but the other 40 need to move completely over the internet. We've also seen a number of customers who say, nope, we're just going to rip that MPLS out and we're going to put the uh, uh, SD-WAN on the top of that. So this is certainly a big movement of this journey to the cloud. What's that next generation network going to look like? And then we're even seeing this idea of, we talked about it with, with Meraki, with our network as a service stack, of even the idea of turning your LAN infrastructure into a cloud orchestrated environment. And so one of the things we talk about customers as well is in this next world, we want to be that partner really that starts to talk to them about what about the concept of an outcome based network? What are the business outcomes you're looking for? And what's that next generation network need to look like to deliver the outcomes where they sit, the business outcomes where they sit today and where they're moving to in next generation. All right, all that said, it's a great idea, Matt. We're gonna we're moving all our applications to the cloud, and you ought to just think we're gonna put SD WAN and solve all the problems. But there's still a lot of questions, right? We have been used to in a traditional world delivering applications with QoS, right? And in, in the internet, I can't deliver QoS across the internet. How do I fix anything across the internet? That's why we typically use MPLS. So that's a big question. Are my applications going to work right across this fabric? What about security, right? We, we, there was a lot of different paradigms of security going back to headquarters or how, or am I going to have firewalls everywhere? Where do they go? And what about this new cloud security? So these, these are some big questions now, right? That people are looking at. The platform, again, we talked about is Velo Cloud and VMware. And I don't want to go in a little bit more detail of that, but I wanted to throw this slide in as well is that they continue to be the market leader out there. And I'm not saying they're the be all end all. There's a lot of reasons to use other solutions at times. I've been on phone calls where we've been 20 minutes into a discovery and I've said, you know what? We don't have the right solution, go over here. Um, but they continue to lead in this space and for a lot of reasons. And this really is kind of some of the key reasons. We're gonna talk today about a concept of forward error correction, okay? That you can actually take even over a single link, keep track of an application like voice and even fix packet loss for voice across the internet. So this is a really key thing that VeloCloud has exceeded at from the very beginning is being able to have a technology that can keep track of applications on a per application level and even fix packet loss on those paths, whether it goes site to site, site to data center, or even site to cloud. And these cloud gateways, thats we're going to talk about this as well, because this is a real key thing right here on Velo Cloud's ability to reliably deliver SaaS applications or even third-party applications like UCAS. Right. This, this solution as well, if, if you're going to have, in our opinion, the next generation solution, it better be kind of WAN agnostic, meaning that we can deliver it across any kind of connectivity, right? Uh, and we do this today with the VeloCloud product. It doesn't make any difference whether that connectivity is MPLS, point-to-point -point circuits, a Metro Ethernet circuit, uh, whether it's you know fiber DIA, cable, wireless, it doesn't make any difference. We've built solutions around this. So that's a strength of, um, we believe CBTS and our team is to be able to again, meet with customers, understand where their applications are going using even their existing connectivity today as they start to migrate to next generation networks. All right, let me um, drop out of this a minute because I wanna show you a little bit of some of the key things here. Oh, hopefully I need to stop sharing here and share my other screen. Hold on a minute, I made a mistake there, everybody.
wanted to talk a little bit here in some whiteboarding about some of the key capabilities of Velo Cloud. And one of the first things I want to show this, this kind of shows the idea of, you know, when we talk to a customer, uh, you bring us in, if we're lucky enough to meet your customer, one of the big things that we're going to want to talk about are what are the key applications that they are running, right? Across their, you know, let's say this is a headquarters or data center, and, you know, this is a branch. What are those key applications that if they've got an SD-WAN appliance at the edge, and I'm just going to write down one internet here, that they want to make sure they're going to keep track of. Well, as an example of some of the strength of a Velo Cloud world, I'm going to just focus right here on the voice. Okay, and let's say that we've got models here of maybe we've got a, a, a centralized PBX where we've got a, a telephone sitting out here at a branch, and that PBX is sitting back at headquarters or a data center, and you know it's connected to somebody's SIP trunking, hopefully CBTS. Well, the first thing, right, in the, in the, anybody's SD-WAN world is we're going to set up, you know, a, a, an auto VPN, if you would, connecting all of those sites together. And that that's kind of table stakes. But I want to show an example here of actually in this situation, even let's say that we've got our headquarters with two internets, but I've got a branch out here that I could only get one internet. I can only get cable and my 4G LTE is terrible, right? How are we going to deliver a, a quality of service experience for voice in this kind of environment? Well, one of the strengths of Velo Cloud, again, now, first of all, from a security perspective, there are VPN tunnels set up. This is all IPsec VPN tunnels. And so everything that's sent across this fabric is, is secure. Well, let's talk about this one voice call, right? A phone call is, you know, going back out this PBX and going to the world, right? That phone call, of course, typically, right, is a is a SIP protocol, uh, UDP packets, right? So a phone call is leaving here. Packets are leaving one, two, three, four, five, six from the front door. But somewhere right here in the local last mile, the local pop, the middle mile, by the time it got to the front door of the PBX over here, we had packet one, we're missing two. We had four and three, uh, three and four out of order, missing five, and had packet six. That's the problem, right? Of how we got to reliably deliver an application across the internet when we're, you know, missing packets and they're out of order. This technology is smart enough that it can start sending this stream again across the internet, even though we still maybe got loss in the middle duplicates that stream. Now maybe I'm missing packet one, but I got two, three, four, five, six. I add them all together and I now have got a happy phone call. We've actually fixed, we can fix and deliver packet loss up to 30% on a voice call and still have a reliable conversation. Still keep that SIP session up, still keep that revenue or service generating call happening. And this can be done by the way, for not only the centralized PBX model, but I talked about cloud gateways out there. We're part of Velo Cloud's cloud VMware's cloud gateways in the US and, and across the globe. And these cloud gateways can be done the same thing for software as a service applications or for other UCAS providers. Let's say your customer has Ring Central and that Ring Central phone is sitting down here. We can do that same kind of quality of service improvement and deliver that phone call and fix packet loss even across a single connection. Now, if you've got two connections, you can even route and fix connect, fix that over two connections. Of course, CBTS as well in our UCAS world, we keep Velo Cloud gateways in the front of our UCAS as well to be able to reliably do. So the reason I kind of came over here and did a little bit of whiteboarding is I wanted you to understand that we can talk to a customer. This new paradigm is about talking to a customer, finding out what their key applications are, whether it's voice, whether it's applications back at the data center, you know, so whatever those flows are, whether those flows are, you know, site to site, if I've drawn, drawn a new site here, or site to data center, site to SaaS like Office 365, or SaaS to UCAS, other offerings like that as well as there's ability in the Velo Cloud world to, to connect directly to AWS or Azure, 
And then we're going to talk later today about our cloud security offering from Checkpoint where we can connect as well. So now you can be sitting at a PC and be able to go out that cloud security. So let me go back to the presentation here real quick. This is uh, just a couple of screens that show a little bit about in the Velo Cloud world. This again, this paradigm shift. This paradigm shift is about the fact that technology can take a look and have a link. Let's say this is your MPLS and it is having a really bad day today. There's times that there's problems with it. At the same time, you even got problems with cable, but Velo Cloud is smart enough to be able to send applications send flows across both those links, reassemble it, and then fix it. In the VeloCloud world, they call it a quality of experience score. And so when we get a chance to do a demo with a customer, again, we want to talk down through applications, want to go into the web interface to show you some of these tools. But there's tools now to be able to keep track of every single circuit, its uh, packet loss, its performance, the application level, the voice, and whether that's in a dual hybrid or dual internet or even a single, that single broadband. What I talked about that example is even with customers you've got that have got a single broadband connection, we can still reliably deliver applications down to that. Um, we also have the ability with this technology, right, to um, also even combine circuits. Um, VeloCloud has a strength of, you know, we talked about that Office 365 experience. Let's say that you're downloading files in Office 365, or in this case, it's from Drop. One of the problems with the TCP protocol, the traditional protocol for cloud world, is that you start to get into packet loss, let's call it a 2% packet loss, and you actually cut the speed of your download by a factor of 10, because TCP windows down how much data it's gonna send, because it's, it basically starts seeing data loss and thinking it's gonna solve it by sending smaller and smaller packets. Well, because we have these cloud gateways between the customer's site you know, and that device, and this traffic is bookended deeper in the internet, we can actually fix that same kind of packet loss. So this is an example of downloading a file here, the screen of how many seconds it takes to download that file, you know, traditional WAN, what it happens with the packet loss, and what happens when we can actually combine circuits and even fix packet loss. And so, again, we talk about with VeloCloud, this paradigm shift is SD-WAN, now you can think of not only fixing applications site to site and site to data center, but now even site, site to SaaS, how you do that in the cloud. Also, we mentioned a little bit about AWS and Azure deployments. Uh, as more and more your customers are starting to put workloads in AWS or Azure, traditionally they had to have circuits, you know, express route circuits from those environments back into a data center, back into headquarters, and they were expensive. And, not easy to route around through in your network. Now you can build workloads in AWS or Azure, simply go to a marketplace, buy those devices, drop them in, and it's part of your routing domain. It's part of your virtual segments and as you would in your SD-WAN VRF. We kind of already mentioned some of these as a paradigm shift is the ability really to be able to constantly monitor applications and circuits and steer around problems, right? And even fix problems. Uh, one of the key things I didn't mention here is that if you've had customers in the past that, let's say, had an MPLS network and an internet, uh, both MPLS and internet at a location, and maybe they were coming in a traditional router and running traditional routing protocols like BGP, yes, they could build failover, but those kinds of routing protocols typically took somewhere in the 20 seconds to a couple of minutes to fail an application over. Um, and these new technologies, you literally can fail applications from link to link in under 100 milliseconds, really the, all the TCP and UDP sessions pay up. So it's a pretty key thing. And we talked a little bit or mentioned earlier in the slide again about this idea of visibility. Um, I mentioned with, with uh, Meraki how this uh, you know, cloud orchestration of every single device and port, well, it's the same thing in an SD-WAN world. This is a screen or a couple of screenshots about you know, when you deploy VeloCloud, you take a look at, you can get a quick snapshot of, you know, kind of all of your devices, all your edges, all your circuits. I can come down and take a look at individual circuits. So there's, a, there's a transport tab here uh, that you can go down and take a look at. I can take a look at, you know, a list of all of my edges, where they are in a map. And so, again, now you've got this idea of a cloud orchestration, all web interface, no more command line interface, and to be able to take a look at, you know, 
go to a site in Denver and who's using the most applications and maybe I want to start to change and throttle some of those things. So it's the idea of orchestration and visibility of this next generation network. All right, I want to take a quick little break right here and ask Gabby if there are any questions because I want to go into security now. Uh, no, we do not have to up at Okay. This really is the big paradigm shift as well that we're seeing. And the idea, you know, in the past, typically, security was about coming from a branch and usually from back to headquarters and going out, right? And that paradigm shift is now changing. We're, we're seeing more, as we talked about, more applications moving to the web, right? And the new model, if you could say, instead of having individual, you know, firewalls everywhere, is to start to talk about taking a cloud-based firewall. And so that, yes, I still have a fabric now to get site to site, site to data center, but when I wanna go out to the cloud, what are these next generation firewalls that can support me there? Um, I wanted to show a couple of things again, just to, before we get into Cloud Guard, is a similar kind of thing on a whiteboard, is that we're also used to talking to your customers about their security model today and what they're looking at. And we basically have seen kind of three different security models that we still work with in the SD-WAN world. We still have a couple of customers, more than a couple, I'd say it's probably about 10% of our customers that are still comfortable with a centralized security model. So again, we've got SD-WAN here, we're connecting all of them together, auto VPN, and I'd say a good 10% or so of our customers still want centralized control. We see this a lot in finance, banking, et cetera, where there's a firewall back at headquarters or data center. There's a PC sitting here at the branch. And even though they want all the benefits of SD-WAN, a quick failover and application security and application improvement, they still like the idea of a centralized firewall control. And we'll support that all day long. I mean, this is part of our you know, we talked about coming in and talking about what are their most important applications and how are we going to handle those? Well, security is the same thing. What are they interested in the security side? So that's still a useful paradigm. Now, we also, of course, then typically have seen a number of customers move to more decentralized with that firewall or UTM stack back here. And that could be their, you know, their customer premise, one, uh, you know, um, hold on, decentralized. That could be their firewall they own, or like in our case, we have a number of probably, I don't know, 30, 40% of our deployments is we're putting VeloCloud at the edge and we're putting a Meraki back here. We've seen a lot of that. Um, and so this idea of now we're, we're now going to go to decentralized firewalls here. Uh, and there's even possibility of all of this can be done virtually. We've got customers who are exploring dropping that into a universal compute platform as, as uh, VNFs sitting in there as well. We're, we're happy to explore that for customers. But the big change that we're seeing is this idea of cloud security. And this, again, this kind of idea that if I've got this next generation kind of SD-WAN routing domain, and it's got the ability to get the gateways to get the SaaS applications, and it's got the ability to have virtual edges to get to AWS and Azure, right? <clears throat> now, what about cloud security? And the cloud security names that you hear out there, uh, in the past, you hear things like uh, Zscaler, um, Semantic, Palo Alto Prisma, uh, well, Checkpoint, and, and, we've, and we've worked with those. We've actually sold those and installed some of those in, in a Velo Cloud situation. But Checkpoint, who's been a you know, Gartner Magic Quadrant leader for a long time, uh, last year brought out their CloudGuard product. Basically, their next generation UTM stack, moving that to the cloud. And so now we're able to deliver that as well. And in fact, even can deliver different parts and pieces of this. One of the great things about, I didn't mention it earlier, the paradigm shift in SD-WAN as well, is the idea of segmentation up here. We actually um, can support right now up to 16 segments. That'll be 64 in the new code. And what I mean by that is that maybe you've got reason for some users that you want to come back to a centralized firewall Maybe other users like guest SSID, you want to dump those directly out. And then other users, for whatever reason, we want to take those and use cloud security. Um, and so that 
that's also part of our consulting is, is that you may even find in an organization there might be different security models that you want to work through. Now, one of the other key things about the CloudGuard product is they're just now releasing as well is a universal VPN client to sit down here on somebody's PC, on a laptop. So that not only do you have the same service, you know, the, a full cloud, a cloud service security being delivered, you know, inside your, your uh, uh, SD-WAN domain, right? If you, and the value proposition, right, is about moving day zero threats out. Now, now I've got my attack plane away from my organization, right? With all these next generation security features. But what about people traveling? And so this VPN client is also part of this offering. Uh, and it allows then somebody to be able to travel and be able to come back into this domain and get to applications back at a data center. But yes, but yet at the same time, also have all the same next generation, uh, you know, protection uh, that you'd expect if you were sitting back in your customer premise. So let me go back to the PowerPoint here real quick. So we mentioned uh, the Gartner that this is built on top of Gartner. Well, excuse me, built on top of Checkpoint number of awards. They've been doing this a long time. You know, when you think of excellence in security, you know, you certainly think of Palo Alto, you think of Cisco, uh, but Checkpoint is right there and it always has been right there in that kind of magic quadrant uh, situation. So Checkpoint has released this product that is called their Cloud Guard Connect. <clears throat> and we actually, as we've negotiated, we're the first service provider in North America to include this in our managed servicing, uh, managed service offering to be able to deliver this. Now, by the way, we can deliver this even outside of our SD-WAN. We do this with our SD-WAN product, but let's say you had an existing SD-WAN customer, or maybe you even got an existing customer, no SD-WAN MPLS networks, and they're looking for cloud security. We can deliver the same thing. So we can sell the, this cloud guard, the Checkpoint Cloud Guard Connect product, even without our SD-WAN offering. But it delivers the entire segment, if you would, of what you'd expect in a, in a next generation, uh, you know, UTM Unified Threat Management. So the full web filtering, anti, you know, anti-malware and bot, antivirus, IPS, IDS, et cetera, application control. Those are kind of standard what you'd expect. But also then it layers in sandboxing so that it's taking a look at everything going in and out of your network as well as SSL decryption. And this is a real key one uh, because I don't know if you, if you notice next time when you're surfing, probably 70, 80% of the websites you go to are HTTPS. And that puts a layer of security on there that oftentimes a typical kind of pre a firewall that doesn't have SSL decryption, it can't tell what's going on in that session because it's encrypted. And so this is a real key part of this package as well. They have continued to, you know, lead, as I talked about, on the security side. Um, NSS is a group that tests um, organization security or firewall or UTM capabilities, right, running against the live, you know, uh, live instances. And they are continuing to be, last time, NSS certified 100% catch rate, and that's a big deal, right? That's, that's the kind of commitment that Checkpoint has in this, in this space. Now, what's great about this offering, again, is it's taking and, and removing, I talked about how, you know, instead of at your branch with your internet there and your firewall, your day zero or your threat sitting right here. And this moves all that out to the cloud. So now, as far as the bad guys are concerned, they think that threat plane, that day zero plane is out here in the cloud. They don't even know that your IPs exist. And so we're talking about now of bringing a next generation product, being able to layer it inside our SD-WAN, put it inside even your other existing, your other customers' existing environments. And this is a full UTM stack moved in the cloud. It's not just a proxy solution. We're not just proxying, proxying web traffic. We're taking care of everything. Any device that's wanting to go out to the internet, we're taking care of that. Um, Checkpoint is very, it's interesting that they actually guarantee latencies uh, going in and out of their network, right? Um, talk about their, you know, uptime, redundancy guarantees, et cetera. And again, this idea of this full stack of services here. Um, and I mentioned earlier, this VPN clients being layered in right now. And that goes along with every offering that comes in here. So when you take a look at some of the other competitors offerings like Zscaler in particular or Palo Alto Prisma, 
having both a VPN client and a cloud, you know, secure internet gateway product, they don't fit together as easily. It's not just all one product. You've got to buy different components. They need to be engineered differently. This product is specifically set that, you know, the VPN client uh, for getting back to access to applications at, at data center, et cetera, or supporting, you know, protected, protecting your laptops, just surfing out on the, you know, when you're out outside the perimeter, uh, that's all included with the product. There are some situations, by the way, there you might want to deploy not only a cloud um, instance of security, but also something back at a data center. And this we see oftentimes maybe that in the data center, they have some public facing resources, um, you know, web, web servers, FTP, connections to other third parties, et cetera. And so what's interesting about the Checkpoint product is that they've made it very efficient to deploy in a virtual environment in a data center. You actually can't do that in Zscaler and you can with Palo, but it's not as pretty. So they made it very efficient. And the product is the same all the way through. And so you've got one web interface to manage, whether you're talking about the cloud instance or then those, those kind of um, maybe high-end customers that also would like to have uh, a virtual instance or even an appliance back at a data center for other applications. Um, and the other thing kind of not known in some worlds is that Zscaler, although it's been a very successful product, it's not, some people don't understand that there are some limits to how much throughput a particular enterprise can go through in Zscaler. CloudGuard's quite different along those lines. Um, and for those other customers, we do Z, we do this SD-WAN deployment, but uh, if you have other SD-WAN customers, people on Silver Peak or other situations, we can talk about delivering CloudGuard into those environments as well. I've got a couple more slides here and we're done. Um, again, the idea of a web interface. We talked about the, the people are moving to UCAS products because they want that equipment out of their building, yet they want a reliable service. And what they expect is a web interface, an application to be able to manage everything remotely. And that's happening in the UCAS world. We talked about our Meraki product and network as a service, how we can now deliver LAN infrastructure as a cloud orchestrated, web orchestrated service. And now we're talking the same thing in the cloud security, on the security side, whether that is the cloud security instance or even instances of those physical or virtual boxes back at a data center. So the idea of a web interface to be able to get reporting out of control, all the things you'd expect, this is becoming, you know, this is what we now expect, right? It's kind of like an app for your phone. You know, now, now we're expecting to be able to you know, no matter what service we buy as a managed service to help our IT staff run more effectively to control our costs, whatever those drivers are, we're expecting that web interface to be able to give us the reporting, the control, the predictability. Um, these all, there's a number of pops that we connect to uh, across the globe on the checkpoint. So it kind of depends where you're located, uh, where, where the traffic's gonna connect to, but this is a product built out across the globe for if we've got customers who are looking at this on a global basis. Um, and there we go, that's kind of the end of it right here. I forgot that was the last slide. Uh, Gabby, do we have any questions or anything that we need to go through? Yes, yeah, so we have a couple. Um, the first one is, um, how does your product, how's your product when it comes to employees working from home? Sure. Um, so if I go back to um, the idea that let's say we've got a couple things for somebody working from home and that this is a real strength of the cloud guard product. Um, my screen is going to lock up here. Oh, can I talk without drawing? Um, the Cloud Guard Connect has that VPN client, and the VPN client has the ability when I'm out remotely to either allow me to get back into my network so that I could get network resources, let's say applications back at a data center or you know uh, wherever those sit, sit inside my network, as well as being protected to go out and surf the internet. So when I'm VPNing, I have the same protection as I would be sitting in my office, as well as uh, access to all the same applications, and so. It, this is um, by combining both the cloud security and the VPN, it simplifies IT's job to be able to have a endpoint, 
a laptop, leave their building, yet have the same access, but have the same protection. Any other questions? Okay. Um, sorry, I'm traveling back and forth. Next question. Um, what would be the cost for an headquarters and per remote site for single remote workers? Also, what is involved in the installation, including cost? Sure. Um, probably need to take some of that a little bit offline, but I will tell you the CloudGuard product is priced two ways. Um, when we talk about, I think my drawing's working now, if we talked about this situation where, you know, I've got a headquarters here and I've got, you know, a branch here and I'm connecting those either SD-WAN or otherwise back to CloudGuard, right? CloudGuard is priced two ways, either by user or by megabit. And so it's either $12 a user or $12 a megabit. So what I mean by that is, Either let's say I've got a hundred users down here sitting at PCs, right? And to give them all uh, access, uh, protection, I have to go out and surf the internet, et cetera, and the VPN client, and basically unlimited internet access, we'd be $1,200 a month. Now in other situations where maybe that's for a hundred employees, maybe another situation I've got like 2000 employees through here, and instead of buying that for every user, I'd like to come out here and buy 500 meg of access. So really we just need to sit down with a customer and determine for their use case, are we better off pricing this per user or per megabit? Now, either way, we're including the VPN client. That's part of this. And so there's no extra charge for that. So you wouldn't typically use this for a single worker. This would be across your company, but yes, we just need get a hold, talk to that partner, we'll get with an SE to go through what that particular use case would be. Okay, um, another question, SD-WAN packet fixing. Are there downsides to using it? Is it a feature that's always on? Is there added latency to make it work? Yeah, great question. Um, the latency on this about five milliseconds to reassemble those packets. So typically that's not a problem in today's world. Uh, we, in fact, we just haven't run into that being a problem. As far as being always on, it's not. That's one of the big differences on VeloCloud. There are some um, particular technologies out there that when, let's say that I've got a branch and I start to do forward error correction back to headquarters, that I do duplication or forward error correction on the entire stream right here. And that's not the case with VeloCloud. VeloCloud does its packet duplication and reassembly on a per application basis and only does it while it's needed. So, you know, we may have a number of applications sitting here. Let's, you know, let's say that I've got a phone sitting here and it needs to get back to the PBX and, you know, I've got other applications, whatever. If it sees a problem only on that phone traffic, that's the only one it's going to fix. And when it stops and it keeps track, there's a, this, the protocol, this dynamic multi-path optimization it's literally a header that's put in every IP packet. And so it's inspecting every single TCP or UDP packet that's being sent. The moment it's no longer needed, it turns that feature off. So it is on demand. It's not always on. It's only on a per application basis. And the latency is minimal as far as its technology, about five milliseconds, so it does not get in the way of the application performance. Great question. Okay, um, a couple more, sorry. Um, how do you get past the sales problem where the company's IT people will want to manage these services or dispute the value of these services? Sure. Um, transparency, for one thing, we go in and we explain the technology to the best of our ability, walk through their applications, show them how show them how we think it might help them, show them other use cases that we've helped other people with, but also let them know that we support co-management. Any of these um, solutions, whether it's our UCAS, whether it's the Meraki Stack, SD-WAN, um, the, cloud, the, the, the Cloud Guard Connect, we support co-management. And so we'll go in and do a Bella Cloud installation and give them full access to all the same web interfaces and controls. Now. Does that mean they can tear their network up? Yes, and it has happened. 
and we don't charge them if they do it. Uh, we, we fixed it even though it wasn't our fault. Um, but yes, yeah, so going in and being a friend to IT, being transparent, let them know they have co-management, we're there to back them up, that's all we can do, and we win more battles than we lose, because in the end, I think it's like UCAS, right? It, back in the UCAS day, there was somebody who managed that phone system, and you were going to put them out of a job when you brought UCAS in, but it's quickly changing that even if you got somebody who managed part-time the phone system, they've got more important work to do, and so if we can free them up from having to manage Cisco routers and BGP and worrying about VPN and worrying about their applications, they can take their time and go off and do other things more important to the business, but yet they still have a web interface to track their circuits to get alerts out of. So they actually in some ways become more empowered than they were before. I didn't go into it this much here in, in this presentation, but these tools actually give you a better view into your network than you could ever hope to have running a whole bunch of Cisco routers at the edge. And then can it be set up so employees at home cannot use the internet for surfing certain sites? Yes. Um, that client, when I talked about, if we were talking cloud guard, that client, uh, my computer's locked up again. Um, that, that client, and you can set web surfing rules for them, just like they were sitting back in the office. So if they're using that client on that PC, then they can't go to particular sites. Uh, when they're sitting in the office, you can set those things up. And technically, even in the Velo Cloud world, you can do some of those things as well. So that's something we want to take offline to understand that particular use case. But yes, these technologies allow that. I'm sorry, a couple other questions. So what if the customer already has an SD-WAN or SD-WAN from another provider? That's one of the interesting things about the Cloud Guard Connect product and one of the things we're excited about, you know, because sure, we, we want to win all the SD-WAN business, but somebody may have already gone somewhere else. Um, we can connect Cloud Guard Connect to other SD-WAN clouds or to other individual locations. I kind of mentioned it early and maybe ran through it a little quick. But let's say that somebody doesn't even have SD-WAN. Let's say somebody's got a single site of 200 employees and they'd like to just get out of the firewall business there. We could take that edge router, build a VPN route to CloudGuard and now move their firewall all the way out to the cloud. So the bottom line is CloudGuard Connect, we have the ability to integrate into people's existing networks. Depends the network and how we're gonna do it, but they do not have to have our SD-WAN to use the CloudGuard Connect services. And then one last question, is Checkpoint's offering channel friendly? We've been engaged with other cloud-based security providers who claim, to be, who claim to be until we went through pricing and execution only to find out different. Yeah, that's been a real problem. I, I, mentioned, um, I mentioned a couple other ones earlier. I won't even mention them again, but that has been a challenge because we had we brought in some of the other cloud folks and suddenly we lose control of the opportunity or as much control as we want because direct salespeople get laid in and they start trying to drive the agenda, which is different from what you as a partner have and what we as a partner to you have. So that's not only is Checkpoint, we believe a better product because it's built, we think for this use case better, but it also is set up, we now, because we're the first service provider using this product in North America. And that's one of the things we specifically talked about is that we are not gonna deal with channel conflict and you're not gonna tell us, I'm getting a little strong here, but you're not gonna tell us how to run this opportunity and checkpoints on the same page as we are. What, the other interesting thing I didn't mention about this, you guys probably in the channel have seen that Palo Alto bought Cloudgenics, okay? Because they specifically you know, wanted to get in the SD-WAN game that we're doing this with Checkpoint is taking it with Velo Cloud VMware is in now in boat in the boat with us. They're actually in all our discussions with Checkpoint and they're very interested in how this is going on. So even, even Velo Cloud is interested in what we're doing on the Checkpoint side here. So long answer, short, short answer should be yes, it's much easier to work in the channel with this product than those other competitors. Okay, um, that seems to be all of the questions we have for today. Um, if any of you have any other further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Matt or your channel manager. 
um, and they will fit, filter those to Matt as well. Um, I will send a recording of this webcast and then the slide deck to all of you shortly after. And we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you.